Mr. Asif Hassan is a world-renowned congenital cardiothoracic surgeon. In lay terms, not only has he specialised in heart surgery, but has also super specialised in heart surgery in children and newborn babies. He has taught numerous surgeons worldwide and is well known internationally for his work and contribution to his field of medicine for which he has served for over 40 years. It was an honour and pleasure to interview Mr. Asif Hassan. It's a, it's a wonderful question uh, you've asked uh, and uh, reflecting on my last 40 years in medicine, uh, that's an area which uh, has always perturbed me because uh, when you are young and you are uh, beginning in your career, uh, your focus is on uh, achieving technical expertise and as you go on you realize that uh, there are things beyond technical expertise and what really affects you and I think makes you a good doctor is learning to control your emotions. And it's a difficult balance. The balance is uh, your empathy to the plight of your patients and also uh, what you achieve. Uh, for example, if you have a death after surgery, uh, that's a huge trauma. Not only you feel as a complete failure, but also particularly terms of uh, operating on children, you find that uh, the trauma which uh, has been inflicted on the parents can uh, completely overwhelm you. Uh, there's nothing worse than having a child die because ev evolutionarily we are not prepared uh, as parents to have our children die before us. And that's a trauma which will live with parents forever. And you begin to realize how completely encompassing and how devastating that is. But of course, as a, as a surgeon, as a physician, as a medical pre practitioner, you do not want that to impair your ability because as you deliver your care to other patients, other children, what you do not want is your uh, abilities to be uh, uh, reflective of what happened previously for new patients, for a new child, as a surgeon, you want to give them the best of your abilities. And I think that is a tightrope one has to uh, walk as a surgeon, particularly undertaking surgery in um, quite uh, difficult and uh, complex uh, congenital heart disease. And my advice to anybody in this situation is to um, keep a thought to yourself that uh, you need to care seems like a brutal thing to say, but uh, the care you are going to give to the next patient should not be impaired by what happened previously. Of course, you should reflect. You should know what had happened. You learn from your mistakes or even from what had happened uh, previously in terms of uh, your techniques and uh, how you delivered your care, but that should not uh, impair what you do uh, for the next person adversely. Um, there are certain uh, specialities who are quite prone to it. Unfortunately, my own specialty uh, has uh, a mortality rate associated with, uh, with the operation we do. Some very complex operation has a 20% mortality. Now that uh, is tremendously high. If you have a, for example, a straightforward procedure like a hernia repair or a gallbladder operation, you'd expect a mortality to be one in um, 2,000 or, 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 or less. In my specialty, a mortality of 20% will mean that every time you do uh, an operation, uh, you are confronted by one in five chance of the patient dying. And over the years, uh, when you reflect on it, uh, realize that uh, the preparation of that has to be in your own mind. Uh, you need to know that failure can occur. More especially, the family and the parents should know that the, the mortality can happen. And that, that, that's one of the most important things. So when the family knows that uh, a, an operation can carry a mortality, um, they somehow um, expect 
that uh, those things can, can happen. It also focuses their mind and of course focuses your own mind that the, these things could, could happen. It doesn't mean that you should impair your judgment, but uh, that reality should, should, uh, should be there in, in, in your mind. If something like that happens, It's imperative that uh, you develop a sort of mechanism where you are able to deal with that. The first thing to do with that is reflect whether what has happened, does your team members know what has happened? Do they also are able to cope with, uh, with, with, with that kind of a trauma? A debriefing at the end of the operation uh, is important in these circumstances. And of course, you need to learn lessons uh, from, from that eventuality. But most importantly, how do you keep your um, emotional side intact to be able to perform similar operations on the next patient? I think that's the most important part of uh, one's own uh, inner um, emotional uh, uh, stability. And you have to develop that. It's not something which happens to all of us. You, you have to develop that. You need to create that, uh, that uh, barrier because you need to care, but not care too much. Because once you do that, your ability to deliver similar care to other patients is, is impaired. And that is uh, not great practice. Dealing with parents is uh, perhaps uh, not in the realm of science. It's, it's, I think it's an acquired uh, trait. Uh, and it's, uh, I would even say that it's, it's an art. And I think those um, are mainly in the realm of um, human factors, how you empathize. But the empathy is, uh, is based on honesty. They should know, the parent should know that you have done your best. They should know that you have tried your best to save that child. And uh, if you can pass that information on, uh, they will have confidence uh, in you. Uh, and that is how you conduct yourself, how your results uh, reflect uh, in, in the surgical sphere. All the results uh, of operations we do are now in public domain. So the parents can easily look up the registries and they see your name and what operations you have done and what has happened. And uh, your own uh, ability to perform these operations to the higher degree of fidelity and knowing that uh, your results are as good as anybody else gives confidence to the parents. So I think a huge amount of confidence to the parents that they, you have done your best. And then your ability to empathize with them. They need to understand, you understand what they are feeling. And of course, having dealt with uh, quite a lot of patients in these circumstances. Uh, you develop your own traits as, uh, uh, as, as a surgeon, but these are acquired things. Either you do it well or you will perish. It's very obvious. If you look at uh, even a cursory uh, reflection on, on the uh, papers in the last 10 years, you will find um, several scandals associated with congenital heart surgery. And that isn't just in this country, right across the world. Because uh, parents, when they see um, unexpected uh, events, unexpected deaths, unexpected injuries, are very uh, short on, on uh, forgiveness. It's very difficult for me to uh, give advice to children who are coming along now and because uh, having been in medicine for the last 40 years what uh, what I've seen is everything changes in five years what I operate and do now um, I wouldn't have even imagined um, 40 years ago that I would be doing just give you an example when I first started uh, in cardiac surgery children heart surgery I watched my mentor Bill Braun in uh, Birmingham operate on a two-day-old child doing an arterial switch operation, a very complex operation where uh, the arteries, which are as uh, thin as human hair, to be transferred across. As I watched him, I remember reflecting that uh, there's never in any um, 
there's no chance that I would ever be able to do uh, this operation. And 10 years later, I was doing the same operation. Um, uh, the message is that you can do anything. Uh, stay focused, have uh, a balanced um, um, approach to things. Um, don't overstretch yourself. Know your limitations, but have a vision that you can achieve things.